Hello everybody, and today on Idovlogs, I received Matt from a service for IPFS that is called Pinata. Welcome, Matt. Hey there, great to be here. So, Matt, can you introduce yourself and tell us how you got into blockchain and IPFS? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, I've been in the blockchain space for around three years now. Uh, kind of got my start going to those global Ethereum hackathons that you know, have to take place all around the world. And competing in those, we actually won a few, which was really fun. And then I started doing consulting in the space for enterprise companies building uh, blockchain applications and prototypes. Uh, through that process of competing at the hackathons and, you know, building these prototypes, we realized that this thing called off-chain data storage was going to be a, a big um, kind of integral part of how decentralized applications get made. And not a lot of people were really thinking of this at the time. Uh, a lot of people were still kind of, you know, I can put everything on chain. Um, but the truth is, it's, it's really expensive to store a lot of data on chain. So that's where you start to look towards off-chain data solutions. Um, and what this means is that your data can reside off-chain um, and then be referenced on-chain. And then it still provides this kind of immutable tamper-proof uh, data that you would expect from a blockchain, except uh, these off-chain data solutions allow you to store a much greater amount of data as part of your application. Uh, so then, you know, we, we recognized this pattern, and then we saw that IPFS, or the interplanetary file system, was actually, uh, it, it was the kind of greatest uh, off-chain data solution that we noticed, and we noticed that a lot of people were, were starting to use it, and but a lot of people were really struggling with it, and us included. We were we were really struggling to make IPFS work for us. Uh, there wasn't a lot of documentation. There wasn't uh, <laughs> there was still a lot of kind of uh, kinks that needed to be worked out. So we thought, okay, how can we make this stable, fast, and work for people that want to use IPFS in their decentralized applications? Okay, so, so from so there, just, uh, oh, sorry. Just, sorry, I'll stop, stop you there. So for those who don't know IPFS, like, can you explain a little bit what it does? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, so IPFS is, uh, it's, it's called a content addressable file system. And it's a distributed content addressable file system. So what this means is uh, you as a user or an application, you can send data to IPFS. And then IPFS uh, takes that data and it runs it through a hashing algorithm. And then it spits out a hash, or what's also known as a content identifier. And then typically that's put on chain in the use case of blockchain applications. But then the cool thing about this is, is at any point in time, um, anywhere from around the world, anybody that's connected to the IPFS network, um, they can ask the network, hey, do you have the content for this, this hash or this content identifier? And then if anybody in the IPFS network has it, you're 100% guaranteed to get back what was initially uploaded. So uh, it, it's very powerful when you're wanting to make sure that your data hasn't been tampered with so, and you have that initial hash. So I, I think there is uh, something that people need to understand about IPFS is that it's not a blockchain, right? Yes, that is correct. IPFS is not a blockchain. So me or anybody else, if I want to add data to IPFS, I can do it. And how IPFS is going to make sure that I'm, I'm not tampering with the data? Yep. Yeah, great question. Um, so you add data to the IPFS network through um, a node, an IPFS node that you're running on your local machine, um, or a server somewhere out, you know, that you have hosted, and you basically just send it your data, and it will start basically deconstructing it into what they call it a Merkle DAG. Um, this might sound familiar to kind of how uh, blockchains work with their Merkle trees. Um, and what this this basically to put it simply, this cryptography magic kind of happens. And the data gets deconstructed into all these bits and pieces that um, they're kind of instructions on how to rebuild the data. 
so that's where that tamper proof thing comes into play. Uh, you that, don't necessarily get sent back the data itself. You get back the instructions on how to rebuild the data, and that's how it keeps it tamper proof. Mm, and also, I think one of the key features is that when a user wants to download some data, it will compare this data to the hash of the data, and if this doesn't match, then they know that it's, uh, there was a problem. Is that how it works? Yep, that's exactly how it works. Yeah. So if somebody tries to tamper with your data, or if a node tries to send you back you know, maliciously changed data, you as the user will know, hey, this doesn't you know, equal back to the hash that I'm expecting it to. Okay, that, that's pretty cool. So, so let's say I'm a blockchain developer and uh, I want to get started with IPFS. So I download the JavaScript client, I run it on my computer, I start to play with it, I add some file and everything is working well. But the time I want to deploy my application to production, I'm going to stumble upon a problem because uh, if I, I don't pin my file to the IPFS network, then my file are, are going to be um, garbage collected. And so you actually built a service to help for that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Um, it's, it's, it's funny, a lot of people view IPFS as like this magic network that stores all of your data for free forever. Um, it would be great if that were the case, but unfortunately it's not. Um, but it is powerful in a lot of other ways, and you know that's why it's being used for all these applications. Um, but what you're alluding to is a, is a, a common problem. You know, developers, they want, to, they want to keep their data online, available on the IPFS network, uh, you know, forever, right? And, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to do that if you're just running an IPFS node on your laptop, because unless a node is always online and always connected to the IPFS network, um, it's, it's going to be, it's, it's going to be unfindable as soon as you shut your laptop off. So to get around this, uh, you know, Kyle and I, my co-founder, we, we recognized that this is a problem that we were having. Um, we needed to keep a, a node that was always online connected to the network and it presented these interesting DevOps problems that a lot of developers are also experiencing. You know, they, they don't want to have to worry about what happens when you know, their node crashes or <clears throat> when their node crashes or, you know, something goes wrong. They just, they want it to work, right? They just want IPFS to work. They want to focus on building their Ethereum application or anything else. Um, so that's where we, we, we came in and we saw this problem and we wanted to solve it for ourselves, but we also saw that I think other people would get a lot of use out of this. So we put together what we called Pinata. Um, and to put it very simply, Pinata is a service where you can send us your data and we will store it on IPFS nodes that we maintain um, and we keep them always online, always connected. We've optimized them for speed. So when you, when you pin your content through us, your data is going to be available for everybody on the IPFS network. And it's never going to go down 24-7. It's always online. Wow, it's pretty cool. And so you guys have a free tier and a paid tier? Yep, yep, okay. we do. Um, so for people that are just getting started, we offer a free tier. You can pin up to a gigabyte with us, and we will store that for as long as you may that free tier. <laughs> wow, it's pretty um, cool. There's, there's, no, there's no real catch there. And then once there, uh, you go over a gigabyte, then that's when you get to the paid tier. Okay. And um, I wonder in terms of developer experience, how you integrate this with the um, IPFS JavaScript library? Is there any plugging or like, is it quite transparent for a developer or how does it work? So we... Uh, we maintain an API that uh, you can hit. It's a REST API. Uh, it's very, very something that I think a lot of web developers will be familiar with. It's just send your data via an API over to us, and okay. you know, we'll store it on our servers. So basically, it goes like this. First, you add to the IPFS network with, with probably your own node. Then you get a reference or a hash of the data. Then you send this hash to your API and you say, please pin this data. Does it work like this? Um, so that is one way that it can work. Um, yeah. that we, there's two main options that you can, you can do. 
you can either just you can send us your data directly, uh, just right off the bat. You don't even have to run an IPFS node yourself. You can just send us the data directly, and we'll add it directly to the network for you. Um, so you don't need to run anything on your end. Um, another option that some of our, uh, our our more heavy users do is they'll they'll have nodes that they are running, and they'll pin content to their own nodes, and then they will also send us that hash. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they'll say, hey, can you please pin this uh, on your servers? And then how this kind of acts as an additional replication layer. So it, in- it improves speed for the network uh, when people are trying to find their files. And it also provides an additional kind of fail safe so that if uh, their servers ever go offline, ours are still online and can yeah. make sure that data lives on. Okay, well, yeah, it seems pretty easy to use. Yeah, so it seems like now you've already developed a lot of the, the basic infrastructure. So what are your plans going forward? Yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a great question. Um, so we really see ourselves as um, basically making IPFS as easy as possible. As use cases continue to uh, prop up around IPFS, we want to... Um, you know, be the easiest place that you can come in and make sure that your data stays online. So things that we're going to be focusing on in the future are how do we get people's data to be searched faster? Um, you know, how do we give them more control over, you know, where their data resides, how it gets to their users? Um, just really kind of uh, expanding the, the, the stability and the speed of our infrastructure and what we offer to the users. It's pretty cool. And uh do you guys have a, a dashboard where a user can have some metrics over the, the, the usage or something like this? Yeah, we absolutely do. Yeah. Uh, so on our website, uh, if you log in, there's there's a few different things you can look at. Um, we have a, in a little upload tool that you can easily send data to us without an API if you, if you don't want to. Uh, kind of an easy yeah, cool. uh, starting point. Um, we got the docs. We have this thing called a pin explorer, which shows you all of... Uh, the things that you've pinned with us, and you can sort that by date, by status of your, your content, um, by hash, kind of really, really anything that you, you want. Um, and we also provide metadata support as well. So if you want to send us some metadata with your, your content, like little key values, um, we can store those as well. And then you can use those to help find your content later on. Okay, wow. Uh, and then lastly, oh, sorry. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, and then lastly, yeah, we have an account management uh, dashboard as well. So you can see how much data you've pinned with us, uh, how long you've pinned it with us, and you can kind of manage all the things that you would want to manage uh, <laughs> when you're using our service. Wow, that seems pretty cool. So, Matt, I have a question for you. If there is um, a, some blockchain developer that want to try out IPFS, do you have any recommendation? What kind of project that they can try it with maybe uh, some sort of hybrid between Ethereum and IPFS? Yeah, that's a great question. Um, so there's a few there's a few starter projects that we always recommend people to uh, try their hands with. Um, and the, the, you know, the easiest one is just building a simple smart contract that you can um, basically log the hashes of different things that you uh, pin to IPFS. So send your data to the IPFS network, get back a hash, and then print that on chain and just kind of practice that uh, that architecture pattern. And that's uh, that's what a lot of projects do in production. So it's, uh, you're, you're well on your way to becoming an expert there. Um, if you want to get a little bit more advanced, something that a lot of people are starting to really kind of look into is this, uh, these things called NFTs or non-fungible tokens. Mm-hmm. And these are your things, think of like your crypto kitties or your, your assets that people store on chain where you want to make sure that your asset has a set of data that you know you, it represents it. Um, digital art is a, is a big use case here for, for your, your, your uh, non-fungible, your NFTs. Um, so yeah, this is that'd be a great a great project. You know, take some photos or some art, store them on IPFS, get those hashes back, mm-hmm. and then create your assets on chain, and yeah. then assign those hashes to those assets. Okay, and with the metadata stored in the smart contract. 
Yep, exactly. Yeah, you um, and the IPFS hash is is effectively the metadata for that that asset. Yeah. Wow. I mean, that's uh, two really good ideas for people who want to try IPFS and uh, and Ethereum. So if you guys want to run some IPFS app in production, make sure to check out Pinata. It's going to be very helpful. And uh, if you have uh, any question or any problem, you can uh, reach out uh, to, to uh, with uh, with Matt on uh, on Twitter. I guess is the most simple. Yeah. Um, so Twitter is a great uh, great option, and then we also have a community Slack that you can join and come and uh, ask questions, get help. Okay. Well, uh, it's really easy to find. Just go straight to our website, and uh, it says community, and click that, and you'll be out right on your way. Okay, well, I'll put all these links in the video description. Well, Perfect. I think that's pretty much it. Uh, thanks, Matt, for coming here and uh, giving us a, a tour of uh, IPFS and, uh, and Pinata. And, um, yeah, I thank you. It was, it was great to be here. And uh, I wish you a lot of success uh, for, for the future of your service. Yeah, thank uh, you. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah. Uh, Bye. Great to be here. Yeah. Bye. Yeah.